Hello and welcome to this Wednesday edition of Freight Waves Now. I'm your host Anthony Smith and coming up I'm going to have a shipper update with Andrew Cox but first we're going to go to Zach Strickland with a carry update brought to you by Powerfleet. Stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome to your Wednesday Carrier Update presented by Powerfleet. I'm Zach Strickland and today we're going to look at capacity in the market because we have finally turned pretty significantly here over the last couple of days. Our outbound tender rejection index falling from over 19% to now around 17.54%. Not a dramatic drop in terms of overall tender rejection rates uh, in general. Like we're, we're still at a very high level. Capacity is still relatively tight out there, especially considering the commodities that some of, uh, some of these trucks are moving right now, consumer products, food and beverage, etc. Uh, but we are on the downward slide of where we were a few, uh, a few days ago. Capacity is definitely going to loosen and we're noticing that it's loosening more quickly then it tightened. So that means that the market is in its, uh, you know, it's, we're not seeing the volumes drop as quickly as we saw them increase, but we're seeing tender rejections drop quicker than we saw them increase. So that's an interesting aspect of this whole uh, scenario here as capacity is a little bit more responsive uh, to, the, uh, to the market than the, than the volumes are. So looking at the United States uh, weighted rejection index map, of course, anything in blue indicates a stronger week over week change in tender rejections uh, in combination with their volumes. Uh, so again, outbound tender market share multiplied by the uh, tender rejection weekly change here. So we, we are noticing some tightening uh, areas versus this time last week, or at least relative tightness, I should say, in, in the middle part of the country, in the Midwest. Over here in the Northeast, though, we've got Harrisburg Market, uh, which I'll get to here in just a second, showing that dark red. This was one of the most active areas of the country as the coronavirus impact really kind of came to be. A lot of volume surging out of there. And now that, that area is starting to calm down. Now, it's, it's not all as what it seems in terms of volumes, but uh, capacity itself is getting a little bit looser uh, up in that region. Salt Lake City, uh, again, another region that was had a lot of volatility here as the, uh, as the coronavirus shot up, uh, now starting to calm back down a little bit, at least uh, relative to the rest of the country. And again, notice down here our little sliding scale of weighted rejection index. So back here a week or two ago, we were talking about weighted rejection index value from 30 to about a negative one or two. Now we've we've shifted that all the way from a 7.92 at the highest end to a negative 18.36, another sign that the market has dramatically turned. We are starting to loosen a lot more. Again, this is a week over week change, not a month over month change or anything like that. So we are starting to see those uh, rejection rates slide, capacity loosen a lot quicker uh, than we had in the past. I'm looking at some of the hottest, uh, or I should say, the least uh, <laughs> cold markets at this point. Uh, Hartford, Connecticut, uh, carriers are probably not going to go over there. A lot of short haul volumes there. Uh, nothing to really see there, except if you are operating in that area, it might be a good time to uh, take advantage of some spot market activity. Joplin, Missouri, Rock Island, and Green Bay, Wisconsin, showing up as uh, some of the hotter markets in the country right now, week over week, I should say. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, again, looking at the outbound tender volume index for Harrisburg, uh, you know, one of the top three three or four markets in the United States currently, uh, and it has been that way for a while now, volumes are actually not falling in this market. Now, tender rejection rates are dropping considerably, so they're falling down. They've fallen down to about 19.1% uh, here over the last week or so from a, you know, where we were about 22.5% uh, this time last week. So again, capacity loosening significantly in Harrisburg, but volumes have not shrunk with any considerable amount. So carriers are simply just more willing to entertain volumes and loads out of this area right now. We're looking at all the length of hauls right here. Most of this is green. Considering that this market is a very short haul market, you should definitely keep that in consideration if you're going up there. You're going to operate between that 100 to 250 mile band a lot. Uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, one of the other hotter markets of the, uh, the day, sitting up here in Green Bay. So tender rejection rates, going up as well as volumes in the Green Bay, Wisconsin. The big difference between this and Harrisburg, of course, is that we have a lot more long haul volume in this market to consider. So those carriers out there that like to drive over the road, maybe look at the spot market in Green Bay today, and that'll do it for today's Carrier Update. 
The comprehensive logistics offerings from PowerFleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with PowerFleet. Welcome to your Shipper Update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what do you have for us today? And today I have a continuation of kind of the, the consumer sentiment and confidence conversation that we started yesterday. We, we got back to University of Michigan Consumer Confidence, or Consumer Sentiment Index, rather, uh, and it fell to 89. Where we had started to see how that consumer sentiment is kind of playing into a lot of the major retailers in the U.S. So uh, some data from Placer AI, who's an, a retail intelligence, um, uh, retail intelligence provider. So we let the three major retailers in the U.S. So through the second week of March, we had double-digit gain in foot, tra tra foot traffic year over year. So that's the last week of February and the first two weeks of March. We saw uh, almost just incredible growth in foot traffic, double digits. But in that third week, as more shelter-at-home uh, ordinance were put in and as COVID fears kind of rose through that third week, we saw foot traffic decline significantly. And another part is a lot of these major retailers, they're also altering their store hours, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. They are, they're changing their store hours, but and a lot of this drop, or some of this drop rather, could be coming from an increased uh, curbside pickup and increased uh, online delivery um, services, but it's not quite enough to, to curtail all of this drop. We are seeing almost a, a drop in sales from these guys starting in the third week of March. And the impact of that is it, it could be taken a couple different ways. One is if we look at, at outbound volumes, we are starting to see them drop. This is certainly playing into that. But also there's a silver lining here in that the, the data varied widely by region. So in places like New York and Louisiana, we had foot traffic drop a lot more. But in places like Arizona and other places where they haven't had such a bad outbreak, foot traffic didn't drop that much. So for me, I look at that and see that it, it, it's kind of a... Uh, a suggestion that things could pick up quickly. Uh, some people are calling for a quick, you know, V-shaped recovery in retail spending. This kind of gives some encouragement that on a wider retail uh, level, that things could pick up greater, uh, could pick up very, very quickly if uh, this thing gets curtailed quickly. Right, and I think you hit on a good point there: is that the, the outbreak is not the same across the country. Definitely a lot of variances, region to region, state to state, even. And so, as you mentioned, we could see uh, the economy come on online a lot quicker in some states, some regions, uh, much sooner than others. I know you mentioned New York, definitely been one of the epicenters. Um, we've seen reports, from definitely Washington, um, Louisiana, parts of Florida. So, um, as you mentioned, it's looking like a lot of the mid Midwest uh, states, potentially some of the Southwest states, um, and some even a few in the in the Southeast here, looking like they're faring a little bit better than some of our uh, eastern counterparts. Right, it's really helpful for the overall economy that we can kind of soften the blow in some regions. It, this will eventually hit every region. There's cases in every state. We'll, we'll likely have deaths in every state, but it's good for the economy that we can soften this blow in some in some areas and uh, where it's going to be prolonged in other areas like those you just mentioned. Got you. And so. Uh, definitely one of the areas that we saw really pronouncing this this drive here was a lot of the panic buying, stocking up, stuff like that. Consumers can only buy so much, right? Yeah, and that's that's the point, is that the people stocked up for months. It means they're going to take fewer trips in the next couple of weeks. They already have been. Uh, this means that retailers are going to have to get, um, they're going to have to kind of get smart about how they're presenting things, how they're presenting goods to people in the stores. Um, but the, the the truth is that this could also just be a lull uh, in, in, in buying, that they stocked up for just this couple of weeks, and we could see another spike here in the, in the next week after all these shelter-at-home ordinances have been extended another month. You know, Louisiana just said today that they're extending through April 30th. Uh, New York will certainly be extended through probably May. So we're going to have shelter-in-place lockdowns for a long time. So this could be that just a little lull in the demand and that we could see another spike in, uh, see another, you know, 10, 20 percent growth week over week next week. And do you think that another part of the cartel could come from people just not having the disposable income. We've seen a lot of layoffs, um, drop in job, uh, drop in uh, employment rates, things like that. Do you think that uh, could play into some people's propensity to spend? Yeah, of course. That, that's that's plausible. And that, that's one of the things we're seeing in consumer sentiment, that some people are losing their jobs, the confidence is falling. Uh, I'm hoping that the stimulus check can, can give these people a little bit of a, of a floor there, that they'll feel confident that they can go out and spend again. Uh, but again, that's that will, time will tell. This, this, this $1,200 that we're, that we're all receiving may not last up that long for many people, so you know they may be looking at, at other things later down the road. Excellent, Andrew. Thank you so much.
Insightful as always, and thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to do for the shipper update and this edition of Freight Waves Now. The content doesn't stop here. Our media team is always hard at work streaming for us around the clock, so check out our Freight Waves TV app on all your favorite streaming platforms, including Apple TV. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.